Yo, what's up guys? Today we're going to be making a lookup table or a custom LUT inside of On One Photo Raw. And it's probably not going to be the way that you expect. So stay tuned and let's go. All right, so here we are inside of On One Photo Raw. I have a photo. The effect is already applied to this. So if I click over here real quick, I'm going to turn it off and you can see the, the photos a little uh, purple, blue, whatever. And then when I turn it on, it gets a little bit more yellow. Um, I said purple, I meant magenta. Nonetheless, not going to worry about it. All right. So what I'm going to do is reset this entire image to the base image. Now I'm going to make some very, very drastic edits here uh, just to prove the point. All right. So the very first thing that you're going to do and if you have a photo that has developed settings, then go for it, put your developed settings. But I'm not gonna worry about any of that because uh, what I'm doing is creating everything inside of the local tab. Now, this is specifically to get a look on your photo. It is developed or designed for you to put on a finished product, all right? Finished product, key point there. So. And actually, I'm gonna leave that where it was. So the very first thing is you'll come over to the local tab. Now, before you do anything, you're gonna to have to resize your image uh, and you'll see why here in a second. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this down. I think I had it at like 33.3. So I'm gonna leave it about here. Now I'm going to click on the mask and I am going to click on the uh, masking bug and make sure that I have vignette and that doesn't really matter uh, where it is. You're gonna click over to the right hand side of your image or it could be on the left hand side, doesn't really matter, just off of the image, all right? We're going to drag this little uh, circle down and we're going to make sure the entire adjustment uh, circle is off of the image. What this is doing is applying the entire effect that we're going to have over here over the entire image. So as you can see, if I bring this all the way down, I get a really dark image. I bring this all the way up. I get a really bright image. Now that is not what we're trying to do here. And actually, let me get my face out of the way. All right, there we go. So now you can see my entire screen and it's very important because you want to get all the way down to the bottom of your adjustment and you are going to tap on this little circle. You're going to get a completely covered screen because your adjustment is all the way over the screen. The next thing you're going to do is click on where it says solid paint. There's going to be a little drop down arrow and instead of that, we're going to click on classic. Now we get this overlay looking thing and this is where the magic happens so the very first thing we're going to do is come up to our blending options or our uh, options menu here the show hide blending options and you can leave it at normal but you can play around with this and you can do a few different things when it comes to a lot we want to color things so i typically click on color and as you can see, color versus normal uh, is a little bit different. Normal makes it a little bit darker across the entire image. You can play with all of these. Even overlay works pretty decent depending on what you're trying to do. But I'm going to go with color for this tutorial. And I don't want this to affect any of my skin tones. So what I'm going to do is click and drag this up. And as you can see, it starts to remove it from the skin tone. Now. Obviously, I'm going to probably need to dial this back if I want to get a stronger effect. And for the YouTube compression, I'm going to dial this back a little bit more than I normally would. So we're going to go about halfway with it being removed from the skin tones. Very, very important that you know what you're affecting. Now, I don't really care for the color that is on here, but, you know, essentially we've created a LUT. So if I were to turn this off and on, there's the original and there's the color cast that we threw over it, which that could work. But if you click on the little uh, rectangle there, you're gonna get your color selector. 
And one of the best ways is to just move this around until you find a color that suits the mood that you're going for. All right. Now, I have been testing out with this image and I think that in this purple blue area seems to work the best for this image. All right. So I'm going to click drop it right there. Again, this is just for tutorial purposes. Uh, you will want to spend more time. Now, the reason why you want to click on classic as opposed to uh, solid paint is you get the options of editing your image altogether uh, or editing how the color uh, cast is going to affect or blend with the image. Case in point, if I wanted this to be a dark purple uh, cast, I can just bring this all the way down and you can see in the darker areas, it's really getting dark and in the brighter areas, it's getting a little bit darker. All right. Uh, it may be a little hard to see on YouTube compression, but if you're following along with me, you'll see that that is uh, absolutely working. Or maybe we'll bring down the blacks uh, in the color, but that just doesn't seem to work. So you can really build some contrast in your image. Now, I'm just going to throw a few uh, edits in here. I think I'll bring up the midtones. Uh, that's not really doing much. All right. Now, as of right now, this is affecting my entire image. And I can tell that by this portion right here. It says all. If I hit the drop down, I get some options. Now, I can put this into just my highlights, and it doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. I could put it into the midtones if I really want to get like wonky with it, or I can go into my shadows. Now, because this is a darker, cooler color, uh, I personally don't like darker, cooler colors in my shadows, so I'm not going to put it there. In fact, I'm going to put it in my highlights. Now, as you can see, it's not doing much of anything. So I'm going to increase my range. And as I increase my range, you can see that this purple color is starting to jump into the image and, you know, give it a little bit of a, a cast for my highlights. Now, for tidy purposes, I'm just going to label this purple and go ahead and close it out. I'm going to add a new adjustment and I'm going to do the exact same thing this time. I'm going to click off on the side here, pull this over all the way. I'm not going to resize that right now because uh, for the sake of the speed of this tutorial. And then I'm going to come down here, paint classic and click on the box just to make sure that I'm operating in the color here. And now I'm going to click and drag this around. And in fact, before I do that, sorry. Go to your blending options. I recommend you do this so you can really see how this is going to affect your image. Drop down and I already put the blue into my highlights. So now I'm going to work with my shadows and I think I'm going to need something a little bit more warm uh, for my shadow tone. And this might be looking pretty good coming around here. And you can see, you know, the shadows. Uh, when I get to this yellow, it starts to make like green on the skin. That's not flattering, not cool at all. Uh, and you can go extremely drastic. You get, you know, the full color gamut here. So whatever you choose, but I think I'm going to go with something a little bit more uh, orange or red because that seems to really fit. So I'm going to go with this color right here. And again, I'm in the shadows. And I want to take this off of the skin. Uh, and this time I can go pretty far because in the shadow areas, there's a lot of shadows in this image, as you can see. So uh, and then I can even increase this again and it'll take over more of the image or I can decrease it and really hone in where I want that to be. All right. So now what I can do is blend the way. Oh, and you know what? This is still set to normal. Now, this is working for the shot, but this is where you, you can really play around with it and say, OK, well, maybe overlay or maybe soft light. Uh, and then I'll come down here to color. 
uh, saturation even. Saturation seems to be painting the t-shirt there. Uh, and only in certain areas. I don't really care for that. Uh, so, but the, the point here is, and I'm really just trying to show you an opportunity to build your own overlays uh, or your own LUTs as opposed to using the stock ones or going out and buying some, whatever it may be. All right. Uh, but let's go ahead and drop down on the shadows because I'm working in the shadow area or I'm sorry, boost the shadows because I'm working in the shadow area and maybe even bring up the blacks. And this is really just helping that color cast blend pretty good. It's hard to see on the live stream or over the YouTube compression, I'm sure. But uh, let me see if I can make something like crate. Well, that's just over the top. But when I bring this up, you can see the areas uh, that are being impacted with this color of orange all right so if you look at the building back here the building is really getting it so as i bring it down then you'll be able to see how that's affecting it uh, and of course you have your opacity slider here so that way you can work on that and you can also control levels depending on which blending option you selected so you have way way more opportunity here than you do with some of the other uh, LUTs. So, you know, now I will say that this does take a little bit of time to set up, right? But here, if I were to go to the LUTs and nothing against anyone who uses the LUT panel. panel. Uh, I use this from time to time, but now that I've discovered how to create my own LUTs and I have more creativity, uh, I will take the time to find whatever it is that I can or what I want uh, out of using that. But, you know, you can click these presets and it instantly colors everything for you. But you really only have two options of control here. And I guess three if you count the opacity. All right. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with this, right? This is a great way of throwing a LUT on your image and being done with it. However, this way gives me complete control over where I'm putting my color uh, as opposed to this one. It's just going everywhere on the image. So hopefully that resonated with someone and you got something out of that. Um, but there you have it you now know how to create a custom LUT. And like always, you can save it as a preset. In order to do that, you'll have to click on the effect module and click the little drop down and save it as a preset. Uh, be sure to click on the local tab or the local adjustments option and then check the uh, bubble. Actually, let me just show you that. So here we are inside of the effect tab. And if I want to save this as a preset, right? The information that I stored over here, if I want to save this as a preset so I can always use it, click on the effect tab or develop, doesn't matter. Hit this little drop down arrow next to the masking icon.